This is Gemar and Yuma, Daf Mem Hey, all the learning for this month of Sivan has been generously sponsored. As of Slos Rafua Shalema, for Yisol Chaim and Devaira, Mirz Hashem, the entire Chabura's learning should be a tremendous chos that should bring him a Shidduch Hagun Bakaroiv with clarity very soon. Of course, the rest of our Chidim, many of them, Chaim and Sarsham, Sivan, Rachel, Sarvas, Kananda, the Vasim, Chaisei, Sol, Mimendel, the Shavlei, 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 with you over Shabbos, over Sunday, Mirz Hashem, we'll send out the details so anyone could participate. And I hope to again reach out and thank each and every person. Personally, I haven't done that yet, but Bar Hashem, we're trying to at least get up the Shirim on time. So let's pick off at the bottom of Mem Dalid Amid Beis. We are five lines in the bottom. We're in the middle of discussion. The entire list that we had in the mission, all the differences between Kain Gadol Yom Kippur, Kain Gadol the rest of the year. The theme that we've seen so far has been that on Yom Kippur, we're worried about Chul Shad the Kain Gadol. We're worried about the Kain Gadol is going to get weak. So you want a smaller shovel. We don't make him change so much. We have a longer handle that he can hold it. One detail we must correct from yesterday, and I think review for pointing this out, that when it spoke about three different karbanas, the power of the Kain Gadol, the power of Avodah Zarah, those, all, I, I said, I believe, incorrectly, no, I did say, I said incorrectly, that the power of Yom Kippur, of Kain Gadol, is when they're anointing a new Kain Gadol, that is incorrect. Rashi over there points out that referring to all three of them are Avirais that were done either by Klal Yisrael, the Kain Gadol, etc. Now, let's pick it up, five lines to the bottom of Chal Yoyma, Zahava Yoroik. We said that each and every day, the shovel was yellow gold, Amar Rav Chisla says, Rav Chisla Shiva, Zuhuve Mehen. There are seven types of of gold. Says the Gemara, number one is all, there's gold. Number two is all, Taiv, good gold. Number three is all, Ophir, gold from Ophir. Number four is all, Mupaz, Mupaz gold, Lustri is gold. Number five is all, Shachut, Shachut gold. The Gemara will explain what that means. Zav, Sagur, number six, Close gold, Vizav, Puryas, Pervayim, excuse me, and Pervayim gold, the seven types of gold. Now the Gemara explains, says Rav Chista, Zav, Vizav, Taif. Where do we see those? From the Chsiv, it says in the Taira, two lines from the bottom, Vizav, Arhet, Hahu, Taif. And that land's gold was good. So we see there's obviously a regular gold, and then there's Zav, Taif, seemingly a higher and more Chush and more. Fancy level of gold. Zav Oifir, we continued. What is Zav Oifir? Says the Gemara, the awesome Oifir. It's gold that comes from a place called Oifir. Zav Mupaz. What is Zav Mupaz? We turn over to Memhei. Ahmed Aleph, today's daf. Says the Gemara, Shadayme Lepaz. It's referring to gold that ex- resembles pearls, that it's very shiny, as the top Rashi points out. It's a massive, it's lustrous like pearls. Zav Shachut, says the Gemara. Now we have Shachut gold. That doesn't mean that the gold was slaughtered. What does it mean? Says the Gemara, Shenit Tavek Chot. Shachot is a contraction of the words Shenit which means it's spun, and Kechot, like a thread. It's a very thin type of gold. Zav Sagur, what does that mean? Niskarais. That when this gold is on the market, all the stores close down, meaning it's such a chash, it's such a good type of gold that when they're selling this one, no one wants anything else. Zav Pervayim says the Gemara, the final type of gold, what is that? Shadayim Ledama Parim, it's gold that the blood is. It's like a red type of gold. It's similar to the blood of Parim. So those are the seven types of gold that Rav Chista pointed out. Now Rav Ashi Amar, four lines on the top, says, Chamisha hey, and there's really only five types of gold. Chalchad v'chad isbei, and each and every one has two types, Zav and Zav type. Meaning, it's not seven different types, it's five types. What were the two Zav and Zav type, good gold and regular gold, that's within each clarifica- classification. The Zav Shachot and the Zav of fear, each one has good and regular type of each one. Says the Gemara, let's bring Uriah, Tanana Miyachi, Teravashi, Chol Yoyim Ayaz Ahav Yoroik, every day was yellow Vayoyim Adoyim, and today it was red, Vahainu Zav Paravayim, and that is Zahav Paravayim, Shadoyim Ledam Parim, excuse me, it's not a riot to Ravashi, that's a riot to Rav Chista, that the final type of gold, the Zav Paravayim, is gold that resembles the blood of a par of a bull. So we're eight lines on the top of the two dots. Says Gamar, every day they would bring a pras, which is a measurement 
of Ketairis in the morning and the same amount in the afternoon. Chal Yom I said Daka, and every day was fine. By Yom Daka and Adaka, the Ketairis that was brought in Yom Kippur was a different consistency, was finer. Says the Gemara, Tan Rabban and Daka, Matal Malaymer, Valikvar Nemar Vishal Chakdam Yimenu Hadot. Says the Gemara, it already says it should be Daka, it should be Fin. Elohavi Daka and Adaka. The reason it repeats by the Yom Kippur Daka to teach me that it's a special type of consistently as we finally ground even after it's ground, you grind it again. Says the Gemara each day, the Kahanim go up on the right side of the ramp, go circle around, they come down on the left side, whereas on Yom Kippur the Kohen Gadol goes straight up the middle. Explains the Gemara what's the reason in the as we've explained many times. He goes up the right side of the ramp, therefore he makes a right turn to start circling around and as we've mentioned that he shimmies facing towards the Mizveach and that's the way that it's called a right turn as he turns around to the Mizbeach. And on today on Yom Kippur, he goes down, he goes up and down the center of the Mizbeach. My time says the Gemara, the cover, the honor of the Kain Gadol, that he can walk smack in the middle of the ramp. What's the honor, says the Gemara? Uh, excuse me, says Rashi that honor is, says Rashi, Rashi is five lines from the top, Rashi explains, to show how beloved and honorable the Kohen Gadol is today, he's like someone in the house, who meaning, the regular Kohenim weren't allowed to cross for no reason across the ramps, they went up the right, they circled around, and they came down, the Kohen Gadol goes straight up, regardless if he's making a right, if he's making a left, he goes straight up the middle, in order to show that this is his house, he's allowed to do what he wants. Not do what he wants, but obviously fulfilling Hashem's will. Says the Gemara, V'chol yoyim kohen gadol makadish yodav raglav min hakiyar. V'hayoyim, and what does he do on today? He says from a golden flask, which uh, we pointed out in the in the live shear. It's a bit of a unique, I don't think everyone knows this, Allah. Everyone assumes that, yeah, the kohen gadol washes hands and legs from a vikiyar. But it's true, but not on Yom Kippur, says the Tanakhama. Have you just said every single day? Explains the Gemara, what's the reason my time? Again, the honor of the Kain Gadol is to use something special for himself. Okay, so now we're in the end of the Mishnah. The Mishnah went through a whole Machlaikas, Rameir, Rabbi Yaisi, how many fires are on top of the Mizbech? Again, we're on the large Mizbech, the Mizbech outside. This is in the Azara. This is what we spoke about yesterday. Bein Ulam, Ulam Mizbech. The tremendous Mizbech, 32 Amis wide, 32 Amis long, a big square with a ramp of 32 Amis. And it's about, I don't remember, 9. 13 Amis tall, a tremendous structure. So on the top of that, how many fires are there? So we had a Machlaikas, exactly what it was. Whereas the Rav Meir taught us that there's three every day and four in Yom Kippur, and Rav Yudha said there were two every day and three in Yom Kippur. So now the Gemara is going to explain exactly where this comes from. Tanu Rabbanan says the Gemara, about 20 lines from the top. First word on the line is Tanu Rabbanan. Every day there were two fires. The big fire. The second little fire that they used for the Ketairis. There were Rav Yudha. And then they had another fire that they added special for Yom Kippur. Rav Yaisi Yomer explains Rav Yaisi B'chol Yom Shalish V'yom Arba Why? Ha'cha shal marach ha'gedayla V'cha shal marach ha'shniya shal ketayris V'cha shal kiya ma'ish There is a separate fire that was always lit in order to replenish in case the main fire went out a little fire on the side to add on fire to the main one. And number four says Rav Yaisi V'cha shal mesivim babi yom A fourth special one for Yom Kippur. Explains the Gemara Rav Yaisi B'chol Yom Arba V'yom Chamesh This is the third opinion that Rav or a mayor, as the Gersa says, every day was four and him Kippur was five. What were they? It's the big fire and the small fire. It's the third one to make sure the fire stays burning. The fourth one is to burn the fats in the limbs. That they're not going to consume that the night, if they came in the morning, there's still some fats and limbs. You got to put them on a fire state, a special fire for that. And a fifth one for Yom Kippur. So says the Gemara of three is exactly what is going on on top of the Mizbeach. But the Gemara now points out that Kuli Alma Mias Tarti Everyone agrees 
that there are at least two fires on a regular day, one for the Marachi Gedele, the large fire, and one for the Marachi Shniya Shal Ketairas, smaller. Says the Gemara Menal, and where do we know that? Something that we've discussed so many times throughout the Mesech, the big fire, the smaller fire, what's the Makar? How do we know that these are the two fires on the Mizbeach? Amar Kra. Says the Basik, he ha ila al Maikta al Mizbeach. It should be the Ayla al Maikta on the fire. On the mizbeach and kol alayla the entire night. From that mention of a fire, zemarach gedayla. That's the large fire. Veisha mizbeach tuk adboy. Then the pasuk says, and on the mizbeach there should be a fire burning. A separate pasuk point. The gazu marach shnei shal gedayres. That is where everyone learns that there's at least a minimum two fires at all times. Rav Yosi kiyama ish minali. According to Rav Yosi, Rav Yosi didn't have a separate fire in order to fuel the larger fire for one out. So where did Rav Yosi get that from? I'm sorry, Rav. He had that fire. Where do you know that there is a separate fire in Afkalei? May Viho Ish Amazbeh took our boy. The additional time that it says. Al Hamizbeach. It could have just said Vaish to Karboi. What is it? Vaish Al Hamizbeach to Karboi. The additional mention of Al Hamizbeach is where we are learning that. It's on that there's a third fire, says Rav Yaisi. Rav Yehuda, what does he do? We're now on the first wide line. Rav Yehuda, Ula, Sota, Sotas, Alito, Uda, Asa. Rav Yehuda learned to something else. Rav Yehuda learned that there is a, is a, uh, obligation to put little splinters of wood in order to light the fire. How would they light the fire? Says Rav Yehuda, the reason, the way that they would do it is they would use little splinters. They would stick in between the large fire, large piece of wood, little splinters in order to light it on fire. That's what Rav Yehuda uses the extra of Aish al Mizbeach. Teach me not that there's a third additional fire, but rather that you have to use these splinter guys. Two lines into the wide lines. How do we know that you have to light, put in these little splinters to fuel, jumpstart the fire on the Tamalaymar? A special apostle teaches we have to do it on top and not from the bottom. Amar Rav Yosi. Minayin shaisa marocha lekiyam aish. Rav Yosi argues, like we just said. Rav Yosi said you have a third fire on top of the mizbeach in order to be mekayim to ensure that if the fire went out, there's always a fire burning. Tamu laimar. Vaish ha mizbeach tukad boy. And parenthetically, the Mepharshimir point out, according to Rabbi Yehuda, how would they ensure that the fire is always burning? The answer is, they had the Kayhanim that would come throughout the, put on the two pieces of wood, etc., to keep the fire burning. Says the Gemara, but Rabbi Yaisi, how does Rabbi Yaisi know that they would use these little splinters in order to light the fire on the Marach Gedeila? Says the Gemara, Nafkele Mechel, the Nafkele, the Rav Shimon, he learned it from the same place that Rav Shimon learned it. Titania, smack him at all the white lines. Vinas of Nehara and Akayin Ishal Mizbeach. The children of Aaron put a fire on the Mizbeach Limid. What does that teach us? That they put a fire on the Mizbeach. That teaches Allah Sata Dalita that they put the splinter, Shlotehei, Elabek Kayin, Kosher, Ubekli Sharis to Rav Yudah. Rav Yudah said, this teaches us that only a Kosher Kayin while he's wearing his, well, using the items from the Beis Amigdash, that's how he has to light the fire. Amr Lai Rav Shemin, Chisala Avay. Do you have a thought that watch as our car of the gam is back? You really think there's a hava I mina? There's a thought to say that a non coin can light and go up on the mizbeach? That's impossible. So why do we need a basic? So it says Rav Shimon, this basic, the basic of us with Aaron, I can't ask him this additional pasuk teaches me about using the splinters. According to the other man, Dummer, we said a moment ago, he learned it from the Isham is Ve'er Tukar Boy. Rav Yudah himself doesn't have this additional pasuk, so what does Rav Yudah do? Says the Gemara, he learns like Rav Shimon, that learns from an Asmini Aaron HaKoyin, Isham is Ve'er, that there's no Havamina the Yisrael could go, therefore you don't need to teach me that it's a Koyin, rather it teaches me this new and unique day, and they have to use a splinter to light the fire. For Rav Yudah, what does Rav Yudah respond? He may also make from that pasuk, Rav Shimon, Av Amina, would how do you know? Maybe you stand on the floor and use these big bellows from the floor, and that's how you light the fire. Meaning, the, your whole raya of Shimon was that there's no way a Yisrael could light the fire. Such a view, why not? You're right that Yisrael can't go on the Mizbeach, but maybe Yisrael can light the fire from the bottom, taking some bellows and making some air and some wind and fanning the flames and lighting up the fire. Kamash Mlan, that's what Vida says. We need the Pasuk of Anasnu, Bnei Aharoin. Vira Meir. What does our Meir say? Says the Gemara, 
Rameer says, Evarimu Bedarim Shlain is Achlum Erev Minali. So Rameer added on a fire. What was that fire for? That in case there were some fats and limbs that didn't get burnt, they come in the morning, they're not fully singed, fully destroyed, fully consumed, fully burnt, they would put it on the fire again. Rameer said, We need a special fire from that. Where does he know that? He says, Mar Nafkli, me veho. Ish from the V Ish from the extra Vav Verabana, where they learned it from Vav Loy Darshi. For Abana Varim Badam Shadakma Arab my Avaluhu. What would the Rabbanan do? with those fats and limbs because they don't have a drasha. They don't have a separate fire. So what do they do with them? Explains the Gemara in the last line. They put it back on the big fire. They tie the other and the again. So we're having a where they're putting the burnt fat, the fats and limbs that did not get burned. So Meir says, you have a special fire. The Rabbanan said, put it back in the Marocha. They tie me on the last last line of Amr Aleph. We learn How do we know if we have these fats and limbs that did not get consumed the night, turning over to Memheyom and Bish, and Saidun al Kabi Mizbeach. How do you know you put them back on the Mizbeach, on the Marochi Gedail, is the sheet of the Rabbanon? Vivain Machzik and Shasidun al Kabi Shal Gabi Saivif. And if there's not enough room there, what do you do with them? You put them on the ramp, you put them around the Mizbeach, and she adds the Marochi Gedail until you have the Marochi Gedail ready with Saidron. Tam Aloymar Shatai Chala Isha Saila al Mizbeach. And that's where the Chachamim learned that's going to go back in the Marochi Gedail, and then not necessarily do you need a separate fire like our mayor. To put the fats and the limbs. Says the Gemara, which carbonites? We're talking about fats and limbs. They walk up the base of Migdash first thing in the morning, and you're like, uh oh, there's some fats, some limbs that aren't fully burnt. You gotta keep on burning them. What exactly are we referring to according to Rameir that we need a separate pause? According to the Chachamim, goes back on the Marocha Gedaila. Explains the Gemara. Rameir says that the, the oila, if it's something part of an oila that was partially uh, burnt but not fully burnt, that's what you put back on. But if you have kitayres, which is not fully burnt, then you do not have to put it back on. The Tani, as we learned in a Mishnah, Rav Chananya ben Minumi Midvei, Rav Lezer ben Yaakov, Asher Teichel Aish, Eso Oila Al Mezbeach. What does he do with that Pasuk? This is how Rameir learns the Pasuk, because Rameir doesn't necessarily need the Pasuk, because he learned the different Pasuk teaching me that you have a separate fire to burn them. Says Rameir, which is like Rechlina Bar Minyumi, that what? Chuli Oila Tamach, Zaviyah Tamach, Zer, Chuli Ketairis, you do not have to put back on Ketairis. But says the Gemara, the Kuli Alma, Mias, Moisivim, Bai Bai everyone agrees. That, on the, I'm sorry, this is a new Gemara. Okay, so that's the conclusion of what we just said. I'm sorry. Let's back off for one moment before we continue. That's the conclusion that we have a machlek as which additional fats and limbs that are not burnt you're going to be putting back on and whether you need a new Pasuk or Mayor says no and the other Tano says yes. But now the common theme that's been running for the last, I don't know, seven minutes when we've been discussing different Marachas, different fires, was that throughout the whole year you had X, you had two, you had three, you had four and on Yom Kippur you had an additional one and each Shita taught us, Ubay Bayayim, on that day, on Yom Kippur, you have an extra one, says the Gemara. Tikuli Alma, Mias Maisivim Babayayim. Everyone agrees that you add on a fire on that day on Yom Kippur. Minale, Isluhu Minale. Where do they learn that from? Explains the Gemara. Naf Gilhu, you know where they learn from? Me, Veha Ish. The extra A and the Vav together teaches us that. Vafilu Mandamar, Lodarish Vav, like we saw in Ahmed Aleph. If you remember, we had a Machleg as whether you you darsh the extra vav, but vav and hey, darish. Everyone agrees that you darsh in the vav and the hey. Says the Gemara, let's go back and let's wrap up some loose ends about the Psukim that we quoted on Ahmed Aleph. Ish Tamid Lamai Asa. Why does the Apostle have to say Ish Tamid? A fire constantly has to be on the Mizbeach. Explains the Gemara. We need it for the following Braisa. Ish Tamid Tukal Amzeh Lo If you'll see the Aleph over here, the Gra is a bit of a different Girsa. That Ish Amizbeach Tukar Bai. That the fire of the Mizbeach should have a flame on it. What does that teach us? This teaches us that the, the second uh, fire for the Ketairis, the second pyre. Like we pointed out, it's on the big Mizbeach, on the outside Mizbeach. How do we know that these are the coals that you're using to light the Menairah? 
And as well, you're using for the shovel for the Yoikon Gadol Yom Kippur. Again, what we just said is Eishem is Be'er Tukar Boy that teaches me that for the second fire, that's what you use for the Ketairas every single day. That's where you take the coals to burn the Ketairas. But now the question is, that's also where you're going to take the fire to light the Menorah and for the shovel for the Ketairas on Yom Kippur. How do we know that those two avoiders of the Menorah and the shovel and Yom Kippur come from the second fire that says, says the Gemara, it's a Kalva Chaimer. What's the Kalva Chaimer? Nemra, it says, Nemra ish biketayres. It says fire by ketayres. Nemra ish b'machta, and it says ish by the shovel of Yom Kippur u'menayra, and it says ish by menayra by machta menayra malahalun by ketayres. Al mizbeach achitzayin. It comes from the outside mizbeach. I've got on mizbeach achitzayin. So it's the word ish. That's one way of learning. Says the Gemara, Oiklach Lederech Zu. Maybe it's the opposite. Again, we're trying to find the source that the fire for the Menayro and the calls of the Katairis and Yom Kippur comes from the outside Mizveach. So says the Gemara, which says the word Eish by Katairis, says Eish by the calls and by the Menayro. That word Eish is what's teaching us they both come from the outside Mizveach. Or maybe Oiklach Lederech Zu, maybe the opposite. Zu namr Eish by Katairis, namr Eish by Machta. Says Eish by Katairis and Eish by the Machta Menayro. Malalun Bissamuchloi. Maybe the Nakuda is that it's the Mizveach that's closer to it after Meaning, by the Ketairas, which Mizbech is closer to the Mizbech Achit, so in the outside Mizbech, but by the Menaira and by the Machta of Yom Kippur, which fire is closer to it? The inside Mizbech, because the Menaira is in the Heichal, and you're putting the coals of the Kedish HaKadashim. So maybe for Menaira and Yom Kippur, the coals should come from the Mizbech Hazav, the inside Mizbech. Therefore, says the Pasuk, says the Torah, Tam lo yimer, yishtam et tukan al Mizbech, lo yisich be. And you know, we learn out from that Pasuk, that Eish, Tamid Sha'amarti, the constant fire that I spoke about, meaning the fire on the Menorah which is always lit, Lech Loitei Al Beroisha Shal Mizbech Achitzayin, should be like the top of the Mizbech Achitzayin, comes from the outside Mizbeach, and therefore that is the Makar that for both the Menaira and the Keteris and Yom Kippur, it comes from the outside Mizbeach. It says the Gemara, Lamanu Eish Lemenaira, Eish Lamachta Minayin. There you just taught me, as the Gemara just spoke out, that it's a din by Menaira. How do we know by the Machta of Yom Kippur as well? Explains the Gemara again, Vidinu, Namar Eish Lemachta Minayin, Eish Lemenaira. It says he's by both. Ma'alahala Naka Mizbeach, he's an Afghan, he's a Chitzan. Maybe that that's one way. Oiklach lederech, or maybe says the Gemara, zu namar eish begetayres, venamar eish bemachta. Mal alam besamach lehev kam besamach loy. So tam eloy mar velokach meloy amachta gach leish me ala mizbeach. What is a me ala mizbeach from on top of the mizbeach? Says the Gemara, me lifnei Hashem. I'm sorry, that's the end of the verse. Me ala mizbeach, me lifnei Hashem. Now, me lifnei Hashem is very important. From before Hashem, which sounds like it's not fully in front of Hashem, but from in front of Hashem. Ezeu mizbeach shemiksas lifnei Hashem ve'in kuloi lifnei Hashem. Which mizbeach is partially in front of Hashem? Havi oimer is a mizbeach hachitzayin. The outside mizbeach. Again, because it's partially one side of it. It's facing the base of Migdash, but not the whole mizbeach. Whereas the Mizbech Hazav, the inside Mizbech, is of course fully inside the Beis HaMikdash. Now the Gemara just finishes off. We need both of these drashas. What's the reason? That which is partially from Hashem, the outside Mizbech. You would have thought us to be specifically in front of Hashem, meaning on the outside Mizbech, on that side that faces the base Amigdash, but not on the other side of the Mizbech. Therefore, says the Gemara, as we turn over to Mavav and we conclude with this, that's why we need both trushes. That's the reason why we need Me'al the Mizbech and Melifnei Hashem to teach us that the second Marach Shniya Shal Kateris can be the Mairi of the western side of the Mizbeach does not have to be directly opposite the Hechal. We'll pick up from here tomorrow in Mirza Hashem.